All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining Sharks for Kids for another uh, Jossum Shark webinar. We're really excited to have um, Kelly Quinn with us today, teaching us how to draw a great white shark. Um, very iconic species. Uh, so that's going to be amazing. And you know, thank you for everyone who's already on the line. Uh, just a quick reminder again: put your questions in the Q and A, um, and. Kelly's an extremely talented artist. You've seen her work if you visited like the Florida Aquarium. She's also prepped over to the East Coast of Florida and to do some stuff um, with Biscayne Bay and really just highlighting amazing wildlife in their natural habitat and really showcasing. Um, if you've joined us for some of these webinars, you've, you've heard a lot of talk about science for conservation and that is an important tool, but I think these sessions are really important for people to understand if you have artistic talent or if you're a writer or you create uh, videos, photos, there are so many amazing tools that you have for conservation. Um, it's really, really important. So yes, the science has a place, but just because you're not doing science doesn't mean you can't help these animals. Um, it's not just sharks, it's, it's really any wildlife and giving them a voice. And I think, you know, Kelly has done an amazing job of that. And, you know, hopefully we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. So welcome to everybody. I'm going to turn over special thanks so much uh, for Kelly Quinn, also Kelly of the Wild, um, if you're searching for her on social media. Uh, and uh, to teach us how to, um, or teach me particularly, how to be a better artist today. <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. So thank you so much for your time and for joining us today. Of course, thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it away from here, guys. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kelly Quinn, and I'm also an instructor with Paint for the Wild, where we teach wild art classes that raise funds for local conservation and supports local conservation initiatives. So today I'm going to be showing you how to draw this great white shark you see right here from scratch using just a few simple shapes, keeping it really, really straightforward and you'll be surprised just how complex a figure you can create from the simplest of circles, ovals and triangles. So we'll be getting into doing that just with a normal number two pencil, just like the one I have here. Just have a pencil and paper and an eraser on the side for a little bit of erasing whenever we need to clean up some lines and you are all good to go. So remember also that whenever you get done with your artwork, please share it with us. We would love to see it, both Shark Education and at Paint for the Wild with the hashtag of the wild. And we will share it on our stories and on our Instagram. So please, please, please share that, share that work with us. We'd love to see your inspirations. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off my, um, my example right here. I'm gonna scoot you a bit closer so you can see. And we are going to get started drawing. I'm so excited. All right, so here we go. First thing you're gonna wanna do is put in some guidelines. And the guidelines are really just one big horizontal line, just like that. Just one horizontal line right in the middle of your drawing of your piece of paper. And then you're gonna do a nice vertical line as well. So I'm gonna be making my lines a lot darker than I recommend you making them because it's gonna be a lot easier to erase them if you make them lighter. So just handle your pencil a bit more lightly when you're putting in your guides and even your first um, shapes and symbols. And that'll be easier for you to kind of clean up later on so you'll have a very crisp and realistic looking scientific illustration. So very quickly, get that guide in. And now we're going to add in our first basic shape, which is just an elongated oval, which of course will be the body of our great white shark. So just keep in mind our nose is over here on the left side. So we're gonna start our nose, work our way over here, go past your vertical line, and you're gonna actually stop on about halfway through your right side, your right horizontal axis right here. And that's because we wanna leave plenty of room for our big old beautiful tail that is uh, just gorgeous. And so it's gonna take up a lot of room, so you need to make sure you keep that space over here for that. And then once you have the upper portion done, just reflect that shape or that line you made up there below and just do the same thing on the bottom. Just like that, guys. All right, looks like that's pretty, pretty dark. I just wanna make sure that you guys can see it. Awesome, you already are like halfway there. Look at that, you already got the body of the shark. So the first thing that we're gonna focus in on 
is the face. Once we get the face in, that gives us a lot of perspective and can allow for us to go down the body, adding in the rest of our fins. We're gonna do the face, then we're gonna do a pectoral, our dorsal, uh, pelvic fin, and the secondary, the anal fin, and then also, of course, the big old caudal fin in the back. And then we'll go in and also do that counter shading, which is a type of camouflage that they have on their body. So the head is going to be kind of boxed in using this cone shape. So you see, it's gonna take up about a third of your shark's body. So you can just use your fingers. Be like, okay, about three of those make up the whole size of my shark's body currently. Perfect, that's what you want. It doesn't have to be exactly right, but like just in general. So this cone shape right here is going to help us stay in perspective for this shark's head because great white sharks, though they are massive and have really big teeth and giant jaws, they actually, comparatively speaking, the rest of their body seem to have a smaller face, especially from the side. So this helps you keep it all together. Once you have your cone in, you're going to go from the point of the nose and you're gonna swoop in. You're gonna go down a little bit and then curve in like a little smiley face and then do a little curve down. So you see I did like a little swoop, kind of looks like a, like a funny little mustache, a little curly mustache right there. That's going to be the introduction of the jaws. And then once you do that, you're going to do this little oval just below that jaw. And that's just giving you an idea of how the lower jaw is gonna curve out and you're gonna leave this kind of like area where the jaw muscle would be. Kind of leave that drawn in because it's gonna create a little bit more form and look really nice later on when we're doing a little bit more of the realistic stuff. So this is about a time that, because I'm so sketchy, so I get a lot of lines in here and that's totally cool if you're the same way. If you like to be a bit more precise, you're all good. But I like to make sure that you're keeping your area relatively clean when we start doing smaller kind of details. So it's not a bad thing to go in and clean up some of your lines um, pretty quickly as soon as you get started, just so you can make sure you're following the correct lines. So I will erase it sometimes almost completely and then redraw it back in, just like that. All right, so now you can kind of see his nose a little bit better and the jaw. And now we're gonna actually put in where the eye is. And so the eye is right above the lower jaw. So go ahead and go right up there. And it's very close to the mouth too. Right there. Again, I'm gonna see if I can still get it closer for you guys. All right. So then once you have that eye in, you're also gonna add in a little V a little V that's like, the V is like pointing that way. And that's gonna be their like little nose, little nostril. And you can take that line all the way to the tip of the nose, just like that. So you're already developing a super awesome gray white shark. Cause once that face is so distinctive, um, so that's why we spend a lot of kind of a lot of time on this part of the drawing up front. And then the rest of the shark goes really, really fast. So we're not gonna do the detail in the eye just yet. We're gonna hold off for a little bit, do some more sketching, then we'll come back. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is put in those big old gills. And so they have five gills. So start on where you put your cone, wherever your end of your cone was, put your first gill there, and then just count out. One, two, three, four, five. Going down the body, just like that. And now just below your last gill, you're gonna actually start your pectoral fin, which these are my last, like, my last gills right here. And you're gonna do a diagonal line going off the body from just below that gill. I'll make sure it's pretty dark so you guys can see. Just like that, nice little swoop. And it helps to make sound effects too. So if you like to be like swoop, or like make a little swoosh sound, that's always a lot of fun. You're also going to then bring it back up at a straight diagonal line, and you're gonna go swoop, curve right here, and then with a horizontal line, pull it back 
almost to touching where you started. And just like that, you have one of their big old beautiful pectoral fins. And again, like I said, we still have all these guidelines in, leave them for now. We're gonna go through and we're gonna clean up our shark after we get through adding in all of our fins. Now, a really fun technique that I've learned doing these classes is that shark fins, actually, they layer upon each other. So wherever the last piece of like the fin that was before the next fin you draw is, like further down the body, is where the next fin begins. I know that sounds a little confusing, but it will make sense. So where my pectoral fin ends right here, go up at it like a diagonal angle, but right here, and that will be where your dorsal fin begins. And they have a good sized dorsal fin, but it's not going to be as big as your pectoral fin. So just keep that in mind. So you're going to swoop your dorsal fin up here. It's going to be a little bit flat on top. And you're going to pretty much straight vertical right down. Just like, shoo, right back down to the body. And don't forget to add this like, little indent right here. Little kind of V right there. Awesome, guys. Look at that. You already have half of your shark done. So we're going to follow the exact same method. So we followed the end of this one begins this one. So next, for the pelvic fin, the end of the dorsal fin, just go down a little bit of a diagonal, it's going to be where our pelvic fin begins. And the pelvic fin looks just like this guy, except very tiny. So it's a lot, lot smaller. So just like this, you're going to swoop out a diagonal, curve back in, like a little C, and then connect back to the body. Just like that. And this fin right here, just so you guys know, is not on the very bottom of our shark, it's on the side. So it'd be like in a similar kind of position as our pectoral fin. Like you see here, I haven't really finished out the rest of our body and gone to where our tail is. So we're gonna go ahead and do that step before we put in these last two. So just define your shark's tail a little bit more, just like so, kind of bring it out around right here. And now we can go ahead and add in our next two fins and then we're gonna do the cuddle fin next. So following our little rule, go up at a diagonal where our pelvic fin ends. And then right here is where our secondary dorsal fin begins, just like that. And then right below our secondary dorsal fin, I'm just gonna go down, it's actually slightly at an angle behind, not perfectly reflected below. So just a little bit below, behind where this one begins, you're going to start the lower fin that looks just like this, and that is called the anal fin. And so that one looks just like that. Perfect. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and sketch in that big old gorgeous caudal, uh, caudal fin, and then we're gonna go back through and clean up some stuff, and we'll do a tiny bit of little shading and patterning, and then we'll start talking some questions, and I'll answer any questions you have. So go out about like an inch, you can use your finger, like one like uh, index out from this last fin. It's going to be where your caudal fin begins and it swoops out like this but keep in mind that it does not go higher than your dorsal fin so don't go shoo, way out here you don't, we're not making a thresher today but one day we, we're gonna make a thresher one day um and so don't go all the way up here keep it down below the dorsal fin and then you're going to come right back down diagonal line except you're not gonna stop at the center line with his big tail. You're gonna go below that line we've been using as a guide. You're gonna go almost like to the bottom of the tail right here because this fin actually meets the lower part of the caudal fin down further on the body than perfectly in the center. So you're gonna start the lower part of the caudal fin in the exact same spot where you started the upper portion, but it's obviously not gonna be as big or as long, and it's actually a lot smaller down here. It makes a better, um, better balancer for them. So that is the basic way to start drawing in your scientific illustrations for a great white shark. But we're going to go ahead and start cleaning up some of these lines. 
So as soon as you get in that caudal fin, go ahead and erase your guidelines or any kind of little extra lines that maybe you were like, hmm, I want to get rid of that. I want to redraw that. Now is the time to do that. And then if you guys are interested in seeing how to actually fill in all the shading um, with graphite in this, we actually have some online lessons on YouTube through Paint for the Wild. So please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Paint for the Wild um, and see lessons like this, new ones every week. We release all kinds of sharks, manta rays, birds, and we're starting to do painting landscapes and such like that. So if you have any questions or want to see more of that stuff, please go on our, our uh, link in our bio at Paint for the Wild or on Kelly the Wild and you can see more lessons just like this. And take your time erasing guys, no rush. We're all just here to have a good time exploring in one of our favorite animals that you're drawing, getting to know them a bit better. Awesome. All right, so you see how mine's kind of been erased out. That's totally fine. You just go back in and redefine all of those lines just like that. And all the way down. And once we get these guys retraced back in, I'm gonna go ahead and start showing you our details. Actually, I put a funky little line in right there. Excellent. You're doing amazing, guys. I'm so excited to see your art, but we're not done yet. So don't forget that there's this little kind of like tick mark at the very top of the tail up here. So just be sure to put in that little hook. So it just is a little swoop in the tail and then it comes right back out. And there's also a center line that goes up the tail as well. It's like diagonal line. There's also the lateral line that we need to put into our great white shark still. So our lateral line starts at the center, goes back to the tail, works its way straight down the body, and then slowly and softly curves up and over like so. Fantastic. I'm going to sharpen my pencil really fast. Awesome. Okay, so next we're gonna jump in and do our eye here. So I'm gonna try to even scoot you closer because I know it could be a little bit difficult to see such a tiny detail. But if you have any questions about this part, of course, I will be answering questions afterwards. So no worries, you don't see it exactly. So all you gotta remember whenever it comes to eyes, and this counts for any animal, any eyes, a shark, what have you. You're gonna start by putting in a little teeny tiny white dot. So with a pencil, you're just gonna draw a circle. It's a little circle that you're not going to fill in with uh, any kind of graphite. And I like to keep it in the top left or the top right portion of your eyeball. And this is gonna be what gives your shark life. And it just is such a simple trick, but it really makes a big difference. And then after you have that little white dot, you're going to fill in a pupil around it. Don't fill it in. You're just going to put the pupil around it just like that. You can see right there, you just fill in the pupil all the way and leave that one little white spot. And now you've got your great white shark just looking right at you. And now this works on both ways. So this works on the left side or the right side. And you can apply this again to any animal and it works the exact same way. Excellent guys. So now that we've gone through, we've put our eye in, I'm just kind of redefining my gills a little bit more. And I like to define the gills by creating this sort of like little curve right above it. It, it kind of goes and meets over the eye. Just like so. This adds a little bit more form and depth 
to your great white shark. Something else we're gonna add in for some extra details are these little tick marks coming from the edge of your fin. So starting from the outer edge of every fin, you're going to just do a little tick, 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 little mark going in just like that. And that I have found really just kind of creates that effect of there being um, texture to each of these fins. So it seems a little bit more realistic. So I'm just doing that on every fin all the way back to our caudal fin. Just like that. And we're so close to being done, guys. But I'm only going to show you just one more little thing. And then we're going to start taking questions. So we need to put in the counter shading. And counter shading, here I'll go and pull up this other drawing. Counter shading is, you see this line right here. Um, and it's actually where animals use either have a darker upper body where they blend in from above, so they're protected from predators above. And they have a white underbelly so that they're protected and go unseen from predators below them. So counter shading really is a big part of the camouflage for great white sharks. So that's why we definitely want to include it. And so that counter shading starts just below the eye. So it's a teeny tiny little squiggly squiggle. It starts below the eye and then squiggle, squiggle, squiggle all the way over your gills. Your squiggles will go about halfway through your gills come down to the pectoral fin, they kind of stop for a second right here, and then they come back up after the pectoral fin. And they come back down again where the pelvic fin is, and then come back up again after the pelvic fin. And they will go over this lower fin right here, and you'll even have some cool little squiggly patterns down here on the lower caudal fin. And I sometimes like to also add in some of these little spots kind of going into the body, or some dark spots going into the belly. So like they have like little freckles. Or if there's a specific great white shark that you just love and you wanna draw him, or they have like a, a little hook or a kink in the tail, then do that. It would be so cool to see you like draw a shark that you recognize from some of the research or just a very popular shark that's been in uh, the news recently. So just like that, you have now learned how to draw your very own great white shark from scratch using just a few simple shapes. And now you even have in your basic lines for counter shading whenever you wanna start adding in some shading. And I actually, we have lessons on Paint for the Wild on our YouTube channel, it's gonna go live tomorrow, where we will actually show you how to graphite this and fill this in with shading. And so, you know, that shading is literally just going to be right here, I'm just gonna show you a quick little look at it, is how to handle your pencil to start creating depth and form using just simple little techniques like this kind of diagonal cross hatching technique. And then also using tools like a brush, like a uh, paint brush, especially a watercolor brush, to feather out your graphite to create more depth and details and make it a bit more smooth. And that will all be covered in that lesson in particular because that takes a little bit longer than the time that we have today. But I figured I'd just go ahead and show you really fast what that looks like. It just like that. And with that, guys, I think that we're now ready to start taking questions. And I'm so excited that y'all got to spend today time with me drawing. And please feel free to share your artwork with us. Again, sharing that at Shark Education and at Paint for the Wild with the hashtag of the wild so that we can share those pretty, those little pretty great whites. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, we've had a lot of people already ask if this is recorded. It is. So you guys, it's going to be on our Sharks for Kids YouTube channel. Um, if you just go to the Sharks for Kids website, you can access it there. Or if you just on YouTube search for Sharks for Kids. Um, but as Kelly mentioned, lots of tutorials if you want to take this to another step or a different animal or really learn how to add the detail. Um, to your shark. I know I'm gonna definitely go in. I will show, I proved to everyone, I did draw. It's kind of, oh, I don't know if it's gonna let me, yeah, it's weird. I can see like, it. It's there, yeah, yeah. it's, it's thinking. <laughs> he's on a line though, he's like Ropey, who's the shark at, um, at Guadalupe that has a, a rope around his, so I'm gonna have to oh, really make him well. not have his, his marine entanglement. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much. 
Um, we have some really great questions mm -hmm. and uh, people are really excited and a lot of big thing was they want to be able to watch it again. I think people want to be able to go back in and, and uh, yeah, see the little details and things. Up there drawing. So, <laughs> Um, first question is what I love to ask everybody. It's a tough one, but do you have a favorite shark? Okay. I decided it says very hard for me, but I think short fin makos. Short fin makos are just magnificent. Like how they've evolved with the tuna to have the same tail shape as tuna so they can chase down literally their main prey item. Uh, so they're gorgeous sharks. I think it's cool that they can jump 30 up to 30 feet, I believe it is, out of the water in the most extreme uh, circumstances. And they seem to possibly do it for fun or to get parasites off. So nobody really knows. But I just like love instances like that where animals display a behavior that's not typical of like, you know, the overall shark kind of identity. And you're like, hmm, what kind of personality does that animal have? So they inspire a very I don't know, kind of like whimsical personality. And they're also just very determined and have this really cool look on their face. So there's a lot of reasons. I'll go and I'll talk for a long time about it. <laughs> but I just think they're so cool. They're amazing. They're beautiful. And, and for those of you who have watched, you know, you've probably seen and, and heard a lot of conversations about how diverse sharks are. And, you know, a lot of times we think about that particular shape. And yes, the great white, the white shark here has it. But yeah, weird and wonderful and amazing adaptations. And it, yeah, they're all sharks, but what they can do and behaviors and personalities are, are so different. And I think that's one of the things that makes all sharks really, really incredible. Um, our next question is from Noah, age six. Um, mm -hmm. When did you start drawing sharks? And which is your favorite? Well, maybe not, we already answered your favorite shark, but. I'm going to add to that. Do you have, because somebody else asked, do you have a favorite shark to draw? Okay. Um, I think a hammerhead is my favorite one to draw, I'd say, because they're just so like, I don't know, like they're so cool how they have, these are head like a pendulum and you can really focus on the head and the face and it just, you can create a lot of really cool movement um, with it. I actually have a painting over here that I can grab in a minute, but I won't, you know, move, shuffle everything until we're like done. And I can show you what I mean with that one. Um, but I was, I started drawing when I was around three years old, but sharks specifically, I really started drawing them when I was in high school. So I didn't start drawing sharks until I was older. Um, so if you're already starting now, you're gonna be like way better than I am, like when I time you reach my age. So you are doing awesome. <laughs> Very cool. And I think it's, yeah, no matter how old you are, um, if this is your first time drawing and you don't have to be the best in the world, I think it's just, um, we're all at home too right now. So it's really nice mm -hmm. to just, I know for me, I'm spending a lot of time on the computer. A lot of my work is I'm not out in the field right now. So getting to draw and, and to color, and I'm going to add some color to that after it's, it's really fun. Um, mm -hmm. It's just an enjoyable thing to do and to create, uh, to get creative. Maybe you guys, you know, add some colors to it that create a new species of shark. Even Ooh, Yeah. Um, that'd be so cool. Yeah, and just, and keep, you know, have fun with it. And so mm -hmm. I think that's, um, yeah, something that's, that's really cool about artwork in general. And, yes. and obviously drawing sharks is awesome. <laughs> They're amazing. But cool. Um, so we had Sydney who wanted to know, why did you choose this job? Or maybe why did this job choose you? I always wanted yeah. to. <laughs> I, I feel like that kind of, yeah, the kind of the job shows me sort of thing. Um, but I'm also very lucky because I have a very awesome boyfriend. His name's Blake Wheeler. And he really encouraged me as well. So he was like my team, my like literally cheered me on when I was just starting out. So I was very lucky there. But I've always had a, a love of nature. Ever since I was a kid, I would be outside every second I could be. I would be drawing lizards and leaves like even though I didn't grow up on the ocean I grew up on wetlands so I was really inspired by water in general my entire life um, and so it just kind of evolved as I had the opportunity to explore other areas and bodies of water um, but yeah so I really just developed such a passion for it I love watching Discovery Channel um, any kind of research or like documentaries. I still to this day don't really watch like series, watch documentaries. <laughs> That's like my fun time is watching documentaries. Um, there's a lot to learn out there. And so you can never stop learning. And that's just really inspired me is that like seeking of new knowledge and understanding animals, how we fit into the world and how they fit in the world. And it's just, there's 
so much. And I just think that's really inspiring. I think that's a story worth telling. And that's why I decided that I needed to help tell that story and to communicate through my personal way through art. Um, whereas some other people communicate that specifically through their research or through song. Um, it can be any number of ways you can communicate science and change. It just all takes, you know, just taking time to explore it yourself. Yeah, and I think that's a really important message for people watching, you know, particularly students watching, but anyone is you don't have to be a scientist for conservation action to happen, to be part of something, to help. Um, you know, I've seen some a lot of artwork now using marine debris to either paint with it or to create stuff. Um, you know, writing, doing videos, photography, uh, a song, yeah, poetry, say you like poetry. There are so many options for sharing a message for all these animals, because they can't really speak for themselves. Wild areas, and, and so using your passion, your skill, whatever that might be, uh, to share a message for wildlife and wild places is really, really important, and it does make a difference. Obviously, science is part of that, but just because you're not a scientist doesn't mean you can't do something to help the planet. And, um, you know, I think we're all at home right now. So maybe it's a time to start experimenting. So maybe you've never drawn before, but today you decided to give it a try and you really like it. And, and now maybe you can show some of your family and friends and, um, yeah, we're not, you might not be at school right now or out with a big group of people, but, um, you know, maybe you could talk to your class if you're doing online classes and talk to them about what you did and get maybe they want to draw some sharks or yeah, so yeah it's, it's a really great time to kind of um explore that and see what you're interested in and find out what what's really fun and and your way to have a voice for these animals and uh whether it's drawing or something else so yeah it's uh you know hopefully people are taking that that it there's so many options and so many things that you can do do you have aside from ocean animals do you have a favorite animal or maybe it is a different ocean animal um but do you have a favorite animal to draw not sharks but a favorite yes, animal i do it's my favorite animal is an alligator and that is definitely because i grew up in on the, on the edge of conservation wetlands in central florida so it was on right on the Kissimmee prairie um and that big old like wetland area that's preserved right at uh, the headwaters of that and so I basically just grew up around dinosaurs. <laughs> That's why I think of them. They are so amazing. They've lived over 400 million years. They were longer than the dinosaurs. Um, and they're just such a, I think also a great example of conservation. They're such a conservation success story because they were going to be hunted to near extinction and not that long ago. I think it was like in the 60s is when they were officially protected. And if they hadn't been protected, we might not have any alligators today. Whereas right now, I think we have like one point something million in the state of Florida alone. So they are a huge success story and shows what people can do when they come together to care about something. And it was only a handful of people who did it, who brought in new policy and education to show why we needed this animal in the ecosystem, just the same way that we need sharks in our ecosystem. So alligators, definitely my favorite. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think it's, Stories like that give us hope too, because it can be overwhelming and it can seem like, oh my gosh, if I'm doing this, is it really making a difference? But you know, with white sharks in general, they have, their populations have come back in certain areas and, you know, once listed as endangered in some areas, but you know, education, science coming together, conservation, people working together, now their populations have come back and are doing better. And so I think these stories are, are a reminder to everybody that it's not hopeless and our actions do make a difference. We can come back from this. And, you know, some journeys may be longer and harder depending on how far gone a species is. Uh, the great hammerhead, for example, now is critically endangered. But that doesn't mean we throw up our hands and say, oh, it's, you know, we're done. It's we, work hard. No. we know yeah. that we can change this. And um, yeah, so I think it's, yeah, those stories are success stories, which inspire all of us, give us hope that the actions we're taking, it does make a difference. And I think it's really important for people to remember that, especially when it can, with climate change and pollution and plastic, it can get really overwhelming. Um, yeah. But if you can just focus on little steps each day and actions that we're all taking, um, you know, the planet's getting one big rest right now yeah. um, from all of us. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, getting a bit of a break. So, um, yeah, it's a good time for us to kind of reflect on those things. Um, 
Miss Sophia, who is uh, one of our very active um, uh, junior ambassadors, she's done a lot of shark projects with us, uh, wants to know, so I'm glad, thank you for joining us, Sophia. Um, which shark is the most difficult to draw, do you think? Hmm. That is a really good question. Um, I would probably say one of the pattern sharks. I think, actually, I know who it is. It's a tiger shark. Tiger shark is probably the most difficult because of their face and their pattern. Um, because they have a very distinct face. You think they would be like a bull shark, but it's not. It's not a bull shark face at all. Uh, even though they seem to have like a similar body type in some ways, but uh, at the same time, not the same at all. Um, but they are just a very complex, very complexly built shark. It's kind of hard to, I guess, talk about it. It's like more easy to like show it, you know? Um, but it's definitely in the head. Um, they ha I, take, I think one of my longest shark draw paintings, excuse me, was be, was a tiger shark because it just took so long to get the face right. The proportions could be a little off. The eye was in the wrong area, and they've got a cool like this like bulge kind of right above their head, their eye. And if you have a light hit it just not at the right spot, it just throws it all off. So it takes some time and patience with tiger sharks, but it's all worth it. So the harder something is, just the more dedicated that you have to be. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so. The Camarota family, like we're talking about kind of challenges, they mm -hmm. wanted to know um, if you, know, Marcella in particular, wanted to know if you have just some good tips for drawing in general. Um, I'm not sure if it just means sharks yeah. or, or maybe just drawing animals in general. What are, what are some points yeah. you would offer people? So there's a few things. Like I, if you want to talk about doing like an exercise, one of my favorite exercises is, I'm going to have, I'm just going to use a couple of here. Um, is especially if you have like a few people to do this with is to just one person just go i'm gonna do a squiggle all right and then you you're, and then you sign it sign the back or write your name down and then you pass it on to the next person and then you say what do you see and then somebody could be like oh i see a snake or i see a dragon's tail and they get like a minute or two minutes to draw you know whatever they see and then they pass it on again and they pass it to the next person and they can see something different and add something to it so that's a really fun interactive kind of sketching exercise that I do a lot with schools. Um, and that one in particular, it's always a lot of fun. It's everybody laughing, having a good time. So it's a great warm up to like maybe jumping into like a more serious drawing or something. Um, so the other thing I would say is I think that emulation is fantastic. I think that if you have artwork or drawing or some like somebody who you like really identify that you like love their work and stuff, being inspired by somebody's work is fantastic. And I think it, you learn a lot by trying to emulate other artists. Not to say that you need to do it and to sell it or to do anything like that, but as a learning curve, it is totally great. If you ever want to do that with my artwork, feel free. I do not mind at all. So please always feel free if like you want to have something as reference, but you're worried about like, you know, you don't want to like, take some of the art. A lot of times you can just ask artists and they'll be totally fine with it. Um, but definitely learning from other artists is a great way to learn and teach yourself basically. And then, um, you know, just giving yourself freedom to like have fun and to create. Cause that was one of the biggest things whenever I was younger was I created not real animals. Like I would mix animals together and create my own like creatures or do dragons and just being really inspirational and like kind of like think outside the box is really fun. And I find that that facilitates learning even more. Um, so those are, there's, there's honestly a lot more, but I know that we only have like a certain amount of time. So I just, those are a few of the ones that I really, I think work really well. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, checking out your YouTube page for more tutorials as well. And I think it's like a Absolutely. lot of things I get asked all the time about photography and my biggest thing is practice, shoot more, take more photos. I mean, that's, that's the thing. We live in a digital age. There's no, you're not going to run out of film. Um, and you know, thousands of photos. So, um, yeah, just practice, just do it. That's, I mean, that's really one of the best things is, is um, just trying it, trying new things and getting creative um, and have fun. I think, yeah, have fun with whenever you're trying something like this is, that's kind of the point where we're putting a message out there, we're educating, but it's also supposed to just be fun. And hopefully yeah. you guys today like drawing that, I really enjoyed it, it was just fun. I don't, it doesn't matter if it's perfect or this, just have fun with it. I mean, that's really, um, you know, and draw it again. And also, like, don't ever, like, it's also kind of, I think that people sometimes think you can only do a drawing one time, and that's it. It's like, it's like a make or break moment, but it's like, I will redraw and redraw and redraw, well, not that, but <laughs> that, 
over and over and over again until I get it right. So there's no like, oh, this is my one chance. Because like you said, we have like lots of materials out there today. So but great. Very good. And with that, you gave some tips. Are there any particular, Kevin um, wants to know, is there, are there any particular tips for drawing sharks? So maybe extending on that, like. Yeah, um, so when we actually were doing this one today, the, uh, remember the technique where we did the cone to like, you know, bring the head and make sure that you have one perspective of where, okay, this is where my entire head area is gonna be in here, it's not gonna go outside that. You can apply that to every single shark. Um, and the same thing goes for the fins. Um, the fins, where this one ends, the next one begins, and this one ends, the next one begins, that applies to pretty much every single shark too. Like I've been teaching, like I've taught like 15 of these now of different species and they pretty much can all be done the same way in terms of like, okay, I do this and then I go here and then I go here and then I go here. They just have different types of fins. That's just the only difference. But they kind of are usually in the same general areas of positioning. So that's a great way to start focusing in on sharks more is just packing these scientific illustrations. And then after doing that, you can start kind of doing more curved things, more difficult form type drawings. Um, Rachel wants to know, you said you started drawing at three, which is pretty incredible. Do you remember, what was your first drawing? Was it of an animal or what was it of? Do you remember? It was a horse. It was a horse. Oh. Yeah, I grew up riding horses, so I was, I'm very much a horse person, so I was like, I drew a lot of horses when I was younger. <laughs> Question. I'm just letting her know. Um, and our friend Noah here wants to know if you, uh, if you went to a school for art mm -hmm. and drawing or art school, and if, you, if so, what school? Yes, I actually went to Harrison School for the Arts in Lakeland, Florida, so it's connected that's to Lakeland High School. Um, and so I went to that for what's it, three years, four years. I forget how long high school is. Now. <laughs> um, so I went to Harrison School for the Arts when I was in high school. And that was great because you get to actually actually experience a lot of different mediums. So I was very lucky. Um, you just apply for it and it's not a private school. You can just get in by applying for it with a portfolio. So anybody can get in. Um, and what was really cool is that they allowed for you to practice with any kind of material um, so I learned basically you did clay, you did ink, you did digital, you did video, everything. So it was great to get a breadth of things to play with so you could find what you really liked. And that's, I think that's something that is sometimes not, is like not available in every, in like every school and things. So that was very lucky. I looked for maybe a school or program similar to that. And obviously then I went to the University of Florida for fine art as well. So whenever I went to college, went to the School of Fine Arts at UF. And I, there I studied traditional painting, art, art history, um, and some digital art as well. Yeah, and I think now too with, with the you know, current world, there's a lot more stuff online. So, you know, mm -hmm. Kelly's mentioned her classes online, but also, I mean, if you're interested in sculpting, there's probably now some options. So even if you're at a school and maybe you're a bit younger and you can't, there isn't a school like that or something that there are still opportunities out there and, and online programs. And so I think, yeah, it's just having an explore because there are great resources out there. Um, and, you know, to try, like maybe you never thought you'd want to work with clay, but maybe you really love it. And so, yeah, so I, I think um, just kind of having a bit of an explore of what's available and now we're probably going to see more of that available, yeah. <laughs> um, which is incredible, which is really, uh, you know, amazing. Um, but cool. Um, we have Caitlin, who is a teacher. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us and your students. Um, and she said one of their assignments was to create journal entries about their field trips to Tampa Bay watershed. And cool. wanted to know if you have tutorials for animals in those areas. So some that you might see on land or waiting in like spoonbills. I actually, yeah. So if you go on our paint for the wild, um, it's P A I N T for the wild. I'll spell out the same way. Um, that's on YouTube and on Instagram. We have tutorials that are about drawing mangroves. We do cypress trees. We do micro. We do flowers. Like it's all right now. It's all ocean. It's um sorry not ocean Florida based, but it, we do have a lot of ocean based ones. But um, it's all Florida native animals. Um, so right now we're actually working on adding in more of those over the next couple weeks. Mostly all drawing right now, but we do have a few paint classes. We have a Spoonbill paint class specifically. And that one uh, it starts with like uh, mini lesson plans and then it goes into like a larger paint class. It's more in depth that takes longer. 
So basically we have a breakdown of like how to draw leaves, how to draw flowers, how to draw mangroves, how to draw feathers, how to draw a wing, how to draw a spoonbill, and then it goes into how to put it all together in this one painting. Um, and so that's kind of how it's structured and how we're creating more uh, coming up. So we're gonna do a coral reef like that as well. And yeah, I'm excited, and a, a wetland. So that's gonna be some of our next ones. Very cool. Um, and Rachel asked, do you have a turtle one yet? Yes, we have a turtle paint class, actually. <laughs> ah, yeah, I'm just gonna write, so yes, she has a turtle paint class. So guys, all the questions, and for those still you know, watching is, check out, there's a lot of great resources. You've heard us say this, um, so you know, if, check out Kelly's resources, um, because chances are you might find the animal one you're looking for, um, adding new content. I've seen a lot of the new content going up, um, or find an animal you didn't know you wanted to draw on, but it looks really cool. And so, you know, have an explore of that. Um, let me see, I had one more that I was, maybe I wrote this one down, so. Yeah, good. Um, they can share them with us too. If they all have suggestions, like, oh, I wanna draw this thing, like, Please always feel free. We had a request for if you could draw a Port Jackson shark sometime. Which a Port is, Jackson? Oh, yeah, I haven't had that one before. Superhero eye bands. I do like Yeah. That. Yeah. That's um, so cute. All right, I'm ready to be done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, stay tuned um, for, yeah. Um, but the best thing is that, you know, there's been a lot of different species. So, you know, stay tuned, mm -hmm. um, get those updates, subscribe to YouTube. Um, and yeah, have fun with it. That's the, that's the biggest thing. So um, really, is there something that you hope, you know, as a final question is, what message do you hope people take from your work? Whether it's sharks or a landscape or, you know, what message are you hoping or voice are you hoping to give in your artwork? Well, I look at art as a bridge. So I think that um, art is like a bridge between our community and another world, kind of. And the reason why I kind of explicitly say it like that is because I grew up in a very rural area, so I had a lot of time out in nature, and I wasn't really in a city for most of my life until I was older. And it's just a very different kind of like feeling. And sometimes I feel like our community and cities can are a bit dis disconnected, not intentionally, um, but just because of the nature of being, you know, in a city, we don't have as much wildlife or much of those touch points to be like bird watching or animal watching and just have that time and that space to see it. And I think art can tell those stories and tell science in a way that's visually like, um, it's just mesmerizing. It can almost make it seem the way that, like the way I look at it is like, it's like mythical. It's like mysterious, it's magical. Um, and whenever you're out and you're interacting with animals, they do have personality. And of course be safe, but I mean like, you'll have like a bird that'll fly by and just look at you and be like, oh, what are you doing? And you're like, that bird's thinking about me right now. And not just some, you know, animal out there just doing its thing, it's a living being. And I think it's good to respect that. And I think if anybody can take away, if somebody could take away just a feeling of mystery, of curiosity, of like appreciation, Whenever they see my work, that it, I, I feel like I have done my job successfully. But um, of course, like I try to just include as much science and research in all of my work as possible. So a lot of times I partner with organizations or I'm specifically talking about a, a conservation topic that's dear to my heart. Um, obviously like coral research, I work with the Florida Aquarium and so corals and the Florida Keys are disappearing. And so they're very important, not only to animals, but I also think that art can be used to communicate how important that is to people as well. So it's easy to forget that we need these systems and ecosystems to be beautiful and functioning in the way that they are meant to, in order for us to also continue to function in the best way that we like to function. So it's kind of like a hand in hand, trying to learn how to balance each other out. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to thank you, Kelly, first off, for your time um, and sharing this amazing work with us. And to everybody that joined for your questions, um, we are going to be launching some Sharks for Kids fact sheets about different species with um, some incredible artwork uh, from Kelly. So stay tuned for those. Uh, make sure you explore the website as well. Lots of fun crafts and activities. Um, and these videos, this video will be on our YouTube channel. Um, but Kelly, if you just want to mention your pages as well, one more time for them to check out. Yep, it's at Paint for the Wild, P-A-I-N-T, for the wild. 
and hashtag of the wild with that on your uh, social media for us to share it. And then also my personal social media is Kelly of the wild, K E L L Y of the wild. Cool. So we hope to see some artwork, tag us, share it. We want to see your uh, white sharks and thank you so much for everyone joining us. And thank you so much Kelly for joining us and sharing this with us. You guys have a great day. See you guys later. Bye.